All right, so today's big idea that we're going to start off with is to talk about a new concept called JSON, J-S-O-N, which is JavaScript Object Notation. It's a way for us to store and retrieve data. So last time we were here, I had asked you to take a quick look at a website. We'll take another quick look at it, and then we'll, we'll do some work. If you want to check this out, you can go to json.org, json.org. JSON, which is JavaScript Object Notation, is a lightweight data interchange format. It is easy for humans to read and write. It is easy for machines to parse and generate. It's based on a subset of JavaScript. JSON is a text format that is completely language independent but uses conventions that are familiar to programmers of the C family of languages, including C, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Perl, Python, and many others. These properties make JSON an ideal data interchange language. So, in short, this is a way to save data. It's a way to store data, to retrieve data, to edit data, to delete data. Doesn't that sound like exactly what a database does? The database stores data, retrieves the data, updates the data, deletes the data. Database is a collection of data. Here's an old school database right here. This list of information, values, keys, value, pairs, and such, this is a database, kind of, in the analog world. In the digital world, of course, a database can be more complex because there's relationships between the data. But the problem with databases is there's a lot of different kinds of databases, a lot of different uh, implementations of databases. You might have heard of MySQL. You might have heard of SQL. You might have heard of FoxPro, um, Access, or a database Oracle. There's a bunch of databases out there. They all solve the problem of those four basic functions, saving data, retrieving data, updating data, deleting data. Oftentimes, the traditional database is required to be run most of the time, let's say, on a server. Um, MySQL, for example, which is a very popular uh, database, has to run on a server uh, so that we can save and retrieve and all, all that data. Our particular app that we're working on could, in theory, uh, work with MySQL databases, although what it requires is a server to run uh, the MySQL database and to be able to retrieve and query the data and all of that. What we're going to be doing is creating a database that is independent, that fodder, follows a bit more of the modern NoSQL style of databases uh, in that it doesn't need a, a server and that sort of thing. These little computers in our pockets can handle all of these uh, functions that we need without a without a, a server although we could take it to that level and therefore we're going to be exploring a database a little later called PouchDB and it uses the idiom of storing the data in JSON format and JSON format is so popular that a lot of websites out there let you access their data in this in this way. Uh, you can go look up a little tangent here. Have you heard of the website Flickr.com, which is the big data, uh, the big photo sharing site uh, over on the App Garden section for developers, API documentation. You can make your own app that taps into the billions of photos at Flickr. All of the ways how to do that is all here in their developers portal. They've got a developer portal over for Android, for Amazon, for Apple, for Microsoft. They've all got a developers portal. Flickr has one too. It's been around at least 10, 15 years, probably longer. It's got a lot of photos, a lot of data. Well, they have an API, which is a way for us basically to tap into their data. And it can be done in a variety of ways. And if you look here, well, look, here's a way to look at the data in JSON format. If I'm versed in these other formats, I have a way to access the data. So there's many ways to do it, but for example, here's JSON. 
and we're going to learn what all of this means in a little bit. But here would be some data that comes back from Flickr. Uh, a particular blog post, I suppose, and what's the address and all of that. That looking at the data in this way so that we can deal with it and work with it in JavaScript or in HTML with CSS. It's raw data in the database. It doesn't really matter what database, but we're pulling it out, we're reading it in a format that we understand, and then we're doing something with it. That's what we're going to spend today and next time on. Today learning some of these concepts of JSON, uh, learning how it works, then implementing it so that we can actually create databases, retrieve data, all of that, and then of course adding it to our projects so that uh, our cool project can get cooler because then people will be able to save something to it, retrieve something to it, data, pictures, whatever, in an internal database in the app. And the implementation we're going to be used, we're going to use, could be used to then further go to the next level to replicate the data from our app, uh, from our device, over to a server. So if you do have a server, if you are paying you know, for a GoDaddy server, a Bluehost server, a, an Amazon server, whatever, what we're learning could then, with a few extra steps, then be used to tap into your back-end infrastructure for data permanence and all of that. And the way this will work is using JSON, which is a, a way to much more to describe data rather than, in a sense, storing it like a, a file. We'll see the differentiation in a little bit. But it talks basically that it's a collection of name and value pairs. Um, in other languages, this could be called an object, a record, a struct, a dictionary, hash table, keyed list, associative array. Maybe one of those keywords is familiar to you if you've used databases in other languages. Here we're calling them uh, values and pairs, or keys and pairs, uh, names and names and values. Uh, so it's uh, it's binary in a sense. It can be set up as an ordered list of values. Notice um, this collection up here can be unordered, and this one is ordered like an array, an array, a vector, a list, a sequence. These don't make sense. They'll make a little more sense as we go on. But these are universal in a variety of languages. In JSON, it takes on um, this format. It's an object as an unordered set of names and values. An object begins with curly brackets, the left brace ends with right brace. Each name is followed by a colon, and the value uh, are separated by commas. So the schematic here is showing. JSON is written inside of curly brackets, or curly braces. So whenever we see curly braces all by themselves, 99% of the time, that's JSON. We see curly braces in other things like functions, but that's preceded with the, the keyword function and the name of your function and then the curly braces. If we see only curly braces, it's usually JSON. So this is going to be one object. There's going to be some string, colon, some value, some key, some value, some name, some value, something something. So think about it in terms here. Last name, Smith. Last name, Jones. Last name, Campos. So I have one value, one kind of little bundle of data, comma, the next one. Uh, last name, Smith, comma. Last name, Jones, comma. Last name, Campos. It's the last value in my object, so no final <coughs> comma. Again, we'll see how this works when we actually write when we write it. It goes on to say we can also have an array for more complex data because this is very simple. One, one name and one value. But databases can be much more complex with much more data and relationships between the data. So we can also use arrays, which are square brackets, to then have sequential data ordered collection of values, square brackets. So something in square brackets, some value. Um, so you can have objects inside of objects for more complexity. What the actual values can be, 
strings, numbers, more objects or arrays, booleans, which are true or false, and null. We can store just about any kind of data. Um, store the data, retrieve the data, etc. And then we can get complex with having objects within objects. Uh, so this is uh, to further associate the data. Uh, so we have string or value. The string is a sequence of zero or more Unicode characters wrapped in double quotes. So whenever we've got a string, it must be in double quotes. Um, with JavaScript, it can be either double quotes or single quotes. And in most of the class, I believe we've only really been using double quotes. But we've, we were able to use single quotes whenever we were writing our JavaScript instead of double quotes. Here for JSON, it has to be in double quotes. The language can be very strict, and here's one of the strict things about it, double quotes, which will mean we will have to write single quotes in other instances in our code when we're mixing JavaScript with JSON. And so any letters, any numbers, symbols, etc., um, some of these are reserved if you want to use a slash. Did you know that the slash is officially known as the solidus? And the backslash is officially known as the reverse solidus. But anyway, if you wanted to add a slash within your code, you simply couldn't write a slash because that's a reserved character. We'd have to escape it. We'd have to write a backslash or a reverse solidus and then the slash. Other, a few other special characters. You can also write it in hexadecimal digits, so strings. It's, it's text, basically. Numbers, and then a really... Who knew that it was this complex to write a number? But negative numbers, positive numbers, 0 to 9, digits, dots, exponents, all of that. So it could be any number, whole numbers, fractionals, etc. It goes on then to say, okay, if you know uh, C, go look at more stuff about how to use JSON in C. If you know Perl, check out some documentation in Perl on how to use JSON. We know JavaScript, so there's going to be various links that we can go over here to read more about using JSON in JavaScript. So this page here is a very simple, just one page intro to JSON. It doesn't give you really any examples. It gives it to you in a very, very, very technical way. And on the right side, you can further see you have objects, you have members and pairs and values and all of that stuff. So it's very, very heady. We'll actually do this right now. So any questions so far? Again, it might be a little odd at the moment, but it'll make sense as we do it. Go ahead and open Notepad++. Make a new file. Make a new file and let's save it. This is going to be pseudocode in that it's not going to be real, real code just yet. It'll be conceptual code, pseudocode. Um, save your file. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. You can save it as plain old regular text. Doesn't really matter the format at the moment. We can call this, for example, uh, basic JSON. J S O N, not J A S O N. JSON, JavaScript documentation. Just any name, just save it. Plain text is fine. We're not dealing with real code yet. But the thing about JSON is that it's it's independent from any operating system or any framework at its core. JSON really is just text very basic text. It doesn't need any special compiler, interpreter, parser, really. All our knowledge of basic to intermediate to advanced JavaScript is all we need to work with JSON. And it's going to be familiar in some respects and different in other respects. But basically JSON here, open curly brace, close curly brace. That's going to be a JSON object. Now this is not any real code, so we can write notes if you'd like. I'm going to say, again, this is not real code, so that doesn't matter. But I'm going to say uh, curly braces define a JSON object. I suppose you could say up here, JSON is JavaScript object notation. 
So it can be used and read by just about every language. But JavaScript really, for better or for worse, has become the lingua franca of the web. All these web apps um, are using JavaScript, first invented by Netscape in like 94. It's really taken over the world and been uh, branched off in a variety of ways, but JavaScript really moves the web. And so the group behind this standard chose JavaScript as sort of a foundation uh, to be able to define objects using the notations of a JavaScript to define objects. So we then have to write double quotes and then some sort of name or key, last name. Oops, last name. We could write it like that. Keep it lowercase for the moment. And then colon quotes your last name, let's say. That's JSON right there. A key and a value, a name and a value. Well, one possible reason I would want to use this is like to bundle together data. Let's say I want to bundle together the user information of someone in the social network that I'm designing. So I want to bundle all of that user data together. That's how JSON could, could be used. So the data that represents a person could be their last name, their first name, an email, and a username. Maybe those are the four things I need to define a person in my social network. So, furthermore, here inside the JSON object, let's say comma quotes first name colon Victor, your first name, comma colon email colon the email. One more, comma, username, I'll just shorten it as UID, user ID. I can make it up. I'm making up my own schema here. I'm making up sort of like the fields in my database. There's a field to store the value of last name. There's a field to store the first name, etc. Colon, quotes, uh, vcampus. That right there now is a more complete use case for JSON. All of that data is bundled in one unit, one object, JavaScript object notation. This is one object. JavaScript is about objects. Remember how we're doing document.getElementById? Well, we're dealing with the document object, the object uh, of the web browser itself, the HTML file is the document. Document dot get element by ID. We're getting an element in the HTML document. The whole document is got itself is an object. And here we've defined an object. Um, I wrote it. On the one hand, JavaScript can be uh, JSON can be very strict, and on the other hand, it could be forgiving a bit, depending how you write it. And the way I wrote it here is I just wrote it all together with really no spaces at all. And in a sense, that's minified because it's been compacted into the most basic units of, of data. But we could have written it this way. You don't have to do this, but we could have written it with some nice helpful spaces like this. And I could have broken this up into a further line here after the comma. You know, just for a little readability, could have done something like this. Maybe put some tabs to make it pretty. Pretty data is good data. That's nice. Same thing, just a little bit more readable, isn't it? This object is defined. We've got these 
uh, pairs in the object, keys and values. JSON data looks like object literal notation in that it shows a particular object. Now, in, uh, in a little bit more practical way, uh, to actually then be usable. This this would be perfectly fine. We're going to see that we, with our practice, we're going to write some plain old JSON in a practice HTML file, but oftentimes we will have it in its own separate file, just like we have a CSS file for all our JavaScript, uh, JS file for all of our JavaScript, we can have a JSON file for all of our JSON data. Let's make some notes here, curly braces, um, key and value pairs, usually in quotes, except when numbers boolean which is true and false, null, and that sort of thing. Can be in one long line, so minified, or broken up into lines. Depending how written, how I've written the object here, I broke it up like here uh, to make it readable, and this would work fine if this was written in its own JSON file. If I tried to do that in the way I'm about to show you, it actually wouldn't work because then we're breaking up the uh, we're breaking up the string. Let's say it can be written in. We we'll could say inline, remember, well, not really inline, embedded in an HTML file can be written in its own .json file. So .css file, .html file, .js file, .json file, that's perfectly valid. So this isn't real code just yet, but let's say I had copy that little chunk down there. Let's say I do this. I do um, var equals user. I'm sorry, var user equals the JSON object. Up over there, I just kind of wrote the raw data that would be best in a JSON file. If I wanted to write it within an HTML file or JavaScript embedded, here's one way. If I say I'm going to create a variable, I'm going to call it user, and I'm going to populate it or fill it with JSON data. So now all of this is stored in that variable, in that object right there. I could then, in theory, if I wanted to display it on, on screen, I could do user dot last name. Um, there is a little, little distinction we would have to do, but don't worry just yet. It's pseudocode. This is how we would retrieve the data. We're saying, okay, let's make a simple pop-up. Let's display something on screen. From the user object, let's take the, the name, whatever value 
is that field. Last name, alert, show on screen what's the last name of that object. So it should pop up and say Campos. <clears throat> if I wanted it to display the username, of course then I could have that say user.id. That's the object, and I'm then displaying a, a particular um, key from it on screen. <clears throat> So this bundle of information right here is very basic. It just defines one user. Let's say I wanted to get more complex and define a variety of users with their first names and last names and, and all of that. That's when we start to then need to use the square brackets to create an array. Um, we can have multiple objects in objects, more data stored together that is related to each other. This is just one bundle of data. All of this is related to itself, but it's a simple bundle of data. I want a lot of data to be stored, so oftentimes the way we'll do it is including arrays. Let's say, let's go down somewhere over here. Let's say we were going to start to create a database of employees, job titles, and such. So again, we would start with the curly brackets. I already know how I'm going to write this, so I'll just break them up for the moment like this. And remember, we have something colon something in quotes. Well, this something here itself could be an array, and an array basically can hold even more data. Whereas a plain old variable holds one thing at a time, an array can hold many things. So if I've got, uh, if I if I use if I further use the the square brackets, I can put an array. I I can put a, a JSON object inside of a JSON object. Let me write this a little bit better. Let's say uh, this is still kind of pseudocode. Let's say um, uh, parent data. And then here we have the JSON syntax. Uh, we do need quotes, but not yet. Uh, so here we've got the square brackets then the curly brackets in these curly brackets I'm gonna break those up and inside of here I could have child data one colon ABC comma child data two colon D E F one more child data three X Y Z. It's the last one, so no final comma. Notice up there as well, commas until the final value. No comma as the final value. Let's see, did we write that up here? Commas. Commas separate separate uh, key value values until the final key and value. Okay, this one's a little more complex, although it's still using the syntax, curly braces. Then we've, we've got a key and a value, but then this value here has many more sub-values. We have this parent data, and related to that parent data, we have all that child data. So the point of that then would be to 
be able to um, store more related data. in a more tangible way. Let me write this again. We'll say, we'll start the syntax. This time we know we're going to have employees. This is going to be like a, uh, how would you call it, a table in a database. All employees are going to be stored in this table. The table is going to then be defined by the employees in that table are going to be defined by the last name, the first name, the user ID, and all of that previously. So all of that then <clears throat> is going to be in the square brackets. Well, I'll write it the same as before. As we know, we're going to be writing a JSON object in a JSON object. It's going to have a lot of subdata related to this, just like that. That's the syntax. I'll write that before I then fill in the info. Okay. Break that up. And then here I would write uh, last name colon Jones. Right. Um, I'm going to keep it on this line here for a reason. Uh, first name Smith. User ID. J. Smith. I could have broken it up into lines like I had up on the example over here, but I'll show you why I wrote it this way. Here we've got this child data 1, 2, and 3. We've got last name and first name and all of that that defines one person, one employee. That that all of that that is all that one bundle right there from the curly brackets. Excuse me. Yes. Can you make semi colon and the parentheses on the second section at the bottom? This one here? No, the top This one here? The top one. This one. And line 32? 32 here. No, not really, because I didn't do var equal, var something equals. I'm not quite writing it as JavaScript yet. I'm just writing it as JSON format. But we would put the semicolon if we were doing var thing equals this. Okay, so um, this is all a bundle of information of one user. I need another bundle of information. So actually, I should have written it a little bit more like this. Move these curly brackets like this. Explain what I did here. It makes a little bit more visual sense this way. Uh, the curly braces now, I've moved them to encompass this one object. This now, that looks familiar, like that was our very first example. This is one object, this is one bundle of information for one user. All of that is stored in the table of employees. So I want to define another employee. At the end of line 36, comma, I would create another, zoom in in a moment, another JSON syntax. Just copy and paste that because these are my my fields. This is my schema. This is my This is my method that I'm going to be storing. Oops. Yes, so this is the method I'm going to be storing the um, put that backwards.
I've defined here how I'm going to be saving my data. I'm going to have the fields of last name, first name, user ID, and I'm populating them with the data. J. Smith, J. Alvarez, John, Juan, Jones, Alvarez. All of these are related to the employees table. But it still basically is a key, colon, a value, but a very complex value because we've got the square brackets, which is the array syntax. I want one more employee, comma, use the same, the same ones here, last name, um, Smith, first name, Penny, UID, P. Smith. It's the last. It's the last uh, value, so no comma there. I said if this was going to be the database of my company. I'm going to have a list of employees, and this could go on and on and on. Right now I'm writing it manually, of course, but we would write code to populate this in a much more efficient way with user inputs and all of that. We're writing it manually. But let's say what I also want to store for my company is, well, a list of positions. What, uh, what positions does my company have, and then how do, I, how do I link them together with employees and all of that? So. If I add a comma after this bracket, because remember, it looks more complex, but this is just name colon value. That is, that is the key value pair right there. So a comma would be I can create another key value pair all within the same object. So that comma right there, very important. I'm creating like another table in my database. Another possible list of, of, uh, of data. So, in quotes, I would say um, jobs, job titles, colon, square brackets. Because I'm going to store here, then, a bunch of data re related to job titles. on that. It's here, the name of this job title, let's say a programmer. Another one that I have is a uh, designer. Let's see another job title, CEO. So now all of this object has the table of employees, job titles. I've got a few employees with their pertinent data all bundled together. And then I've got job titles here with just names, but then I can further add more um, more key and value pairs. Let's say salary. In this case, if I'm going to use numbers, I don't have to use quotes because numbers are numbers. Numbers are not strings. So I don't have to write it with string with quotes here because they're numbers. Let's say the salary, yearly salary for a program, but just choosing any number, seventy-five thousand. So then I would need that over for designer. And 
and also for CEO. So all of this data is bundled together. The parts in the, in the angle brackets behaves like an array. It's all key and value pairs. We can get deeper data association with using arrays. Technically, they're not, the data is not really related. This is one of the shortcomings of the NoSQL sort of style of databases in that with a traditional kind of database you have a way to associate a table with another table that these two you know, pieces of data relate to each other, they're linked with each other. Here it's all one bundle, but we're not exactly, the way we've written our data so far, we're not associating Patty Smith as the CEO uh, of the company. We're not associating that this value, this, this JSON object, is associated with this unless we further program our, our schema, our style of the database. That would require that I go back to my data over here and add a new key value pair of job title. And in the job title, put in programmer, designer, CEO. Because then later via the JavaScript and such, I can then work with work with the data to actually display it and you know populate fields on screen and edit it with CSS and, and all of that. So right now, really, there's no relationship with this data and this data. It's all one big bundle, but it's not exactly related unless I add it. One more field up on the top of each of these. Job. This can be anything, just to show you. It won't make sense, but if I call it kitty, and then have that be programmer. Let's say that Juan is also a programmer. And then we'll say that Patty is CEO. Obviously, kitty is being substituted for something meaningful like job. Technically, there still no, is no relationship between two of the data, the, those two fields of data there. However, we're setting it up so that via more programming, we can work with the data as it's related together. Still writing kind of like pseudocode. Okay, this is our creation of our, this is crea the creation of our database. And to actually show it on screen where I had up here, well, to show some of the data, I simply say, okay, there's the object, give me the give me the user ID, whatever is in the user ID field, give me its value. That's that. But now that we're more complex with data inside of data, we have to write, we have to retrieve the data in a slightly different way. So that was my data raw right there. Let me make a note here, let's say following example like in a JSON file. I wrote that as if it was in a JSON file. Following example will be as if it's in, just so that it makes sense, so that if it's in a embedded following is like if it were embedded. This is then copying and pasting the exact same thing. This is when I have var thing equals and then all of this and then semicolon at the end. So now we've bundled all of this into the thing into the thing variable. It's now 
usable for JavaScript. Whereas over here, it's just defined as data. It's up to whatever framework you're using. If you're using Ruby, that data, you can use it. You just need to learn how to use it in Ruby. If you're using C Sharp, there's your data, but now you have to look up how do I use JSON data in C Sharp. In JavaScript, for example, okay, here's how I can use the data in JavaScript. I'm going to put it in a variable. So that then basically I can write alert thing dot employee employees zero dot last name. What that would do is pop up Jones. Remember, numbers are counting from 0 and up. So right here, don't write this, of course, but that would be 0, that would be 1, that would be 2. Job titles, 0, 1, 2. So here I'm saying, I've got my thing object, which can be called anything I call it thing. I've got either to work with employees or job titles. So I'm saying, OK. From employees, the zero with item, zero one two, the zero with item, the last name. Show me the last name. Alert the last name. If I wanted to show what's the uh, what's the user ID of the zero with employee, zero with employee user ID, and that'll be J Jones. The third item, give me the third, give me the third job title. Give me the job title of the third person in the employee's record. Two because it's zero, one, two, the third job. That would alert CEO. Along the same lines, well, if I wanted to display on screen, so again, there's our object, specifically from job titles, which one and what salary to. So that would pop up CEO from employees and salary from job titles. This would alert if I, if we did it on screen, uh, you know, written on the page. This would display uh, Patty, and it would display 123,000. Just that literal data. It wouldn't show it as, you know, with commas and dollar symbols and all of that. It's further programming to get it to look exactly how we want. Because again, computers are dumb. They only do what you tell them to do. Right here, I told it very simply. Show me what's in there. It didn't format it in any nice way human-readable way. This is pulling the data. That's all pseudocode. It wouldn't exactly really work if we run if we run it as is. It would need a little bit more more setup. But here are various concepts that are being introduced that we will then write some real code to actually do something interesting. This, this is starting to then be our, our Java, our JSON introduction. Again, it might not quite make sense, but it'll make more sense as we do some more hands-on, but any questions so far? Let's take our first break. I'm going to put this file in the network folder if you want it. Before you take your break, I would like you to create a basic 10-line HTML file. Remember that classic 10 lines of code? Uh, go ahead and create that, then take your break. I'll write mine in a moment. But create that, take a break. We'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. And then we'll, we'll write some real code that really works.